By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am bringing you magic from the Twee Klavre. It's my favorite pub in Amsterdam. And today I am playing against Richard and he's playing with a mono black deck. You could say a black weenie deck. And he's, uh, I am playing with a uh, Artificer's Inventions deck. So the interesting thing here about Richard's deck is he has said, you know what, I'm gonna go into my binders and I'm gonna play with those cool creatures that usually just don't make the cut. And I just wanna talk about a couple of those choices that he has made. So one of them is here now on the screen, the Urk Raiders. Now Urk Raiders, it's a pretty good card actually. It's two mana, it's a two, three, uh, which is pretty strong by itself. Now it has to attack every turn. That's a downside. And if you keep it home, because that's actually an option that's gonna cost you two damage, which is pretty steep. So usually you would just play this and keep attacking. Now, another one of those creatures that uh, doesn't always make the cut is Vampire Bats. And Vampire Bats is one black, it's an 0-1 flyer from Legends, and you can spend a Swamp to give the plus one, plus O, but you cannot spend more than two this way. So it can be a 2-1 max. And of course, you're spending black mana to do so. And usually in these aggro decks, you're tapping all your mana, especially the first, uh, first turn, the second turn, the third turn, and, and turn number four, just to get creatures out, you're just playing creatures. So you probably don't have the mana to pump your vampire beds. And so you're unable to deal any damage. I guess that's the main reason why many people don't play with vampire beds in these aggressive black decks. But nonetheless, it is a good card. It's got evasion with flying, you know, there's flying is, is a very good mechanic in old school magic. And another thing, uh, Richard is playing it with bad moons. And I think bad moon goes really well with both of these creatures because the uh, Urk Raiders have to attack every turn, so you have to try to pump it up and, and make it bigger so that it's still useful and it's not just attacking and dying. So Bad Moon works really well, and one Bad Moon means that Urk Raiders can no longer be killed by Mishra's Factory. So I think, you know, this deck, it's going to be interesting to see how it performs. Um, it is really budget friendly, so if you like this deck and if you like the way it goes, you can easily construct this yourself uh, if you have a smaller uh, budget. Obviously, I believe the is playing with a lot of black border beta, beta cards or alpha cards in this deck. I'm not sure, but obviously you can just go for reprints. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to see this. Now I am playing with my uh, Artificers deck and here we can see a picture of my deck. Let's take a look. So this deck basically works on Sage of Latinam. I'm playing with three Sage of Latinams. You just want to get creatures out. You just want to get your mana vault out really early in the game. And when you have what Sage of Latinam does, by the way, maybe you're not familiar with the card. It's one blue and one. It's a one, two creature. You can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then you can draw a card in return. So a mana vault is one to play and then you can tap it for three colorless mana. And then it's going to deal damage every turn when you don't untap it. And to untap it, you have to pay four in your upkeep. So when you combine this with Sage of Latinum, it's really nice because you can get your mana vault out, you can ramp for mana, and then I can tap the Sage to sack it. So then for one colorless mana, I'm getting three colorless mana in return and I get to draw a card. So that's really kind of the tempo play that I'm hoping for with this Artificer deck. And I'm also playing with the Archaeologist because when I sack a lot of artifacts, I need something to get them back. So I can use the archeologist for that. Now, the, and there are some other tricks in this deck. Probably you recognize them already. Taunus' Coffin works really well with, with Triskelion and Tetravus. Also the copy artifacts are a no brainer in such an artifact heavy deck. Tetravus by itself with Sage of Latinam is also a great combination because I can play it. It comes into play with three plus one plus one counters during my upkeep. I can take the counters off and make one one smaller tetravites and I can use them to draw a card if I want to. So to kind of refill my hand uh, in that way. So there's a lot of synergy in this deck. Um, still tweaking it, still looking at what's the best. I think it's gonna be difficult for me to, to, to stabilize. It's gonna be a lot of early damage coming in and playing against this aggressive black brew. So my main goal is gonna be kind of to stop my opponent and then slowly I will be able to kind of take over the game. Okay, let's go to game number one and see what's gonna happen. Game number one, and I'm sitting on the left and Richard on the right there. There we see that Vampire Bats we talked about, turn one, 01 Flyer, Legends. And there's a strip mine on my part. There's an attack going to 19 here. 
let's see and there is a Mishra's factory into a mana vault so that means that I can start making some pace next turn ooh sinkhole that's that's gonna be a problem for me dealing with those sinkholes but there is a library of Alexandria so I guess I'm really lucky that he sinkholed that factory and there is that bat moon that means his vampire bets is now a 1-2 flyer and I'm on 18 drawing an extra card here And now I have nine in hand, I believe. Or would it be eight because I played the Mana Vault earlier? It's probably eight going to seven now. Passing turn. So there's a Tundra. Ooh, there's an Urk Raiders. It's now a three, four. There is a Quick Swords to Plowsiers on the Urk Raiders. And of course, I'm, I'm playing cards out easier now because they have that active Loa so I'm not afraid to kind of spend my swords on an Urk Raiders Ooh, look at that a Black Lotus into a Hypnotic Spectre I believe I call it a budget deck didn't I, I <laughs> but I think in all honesty I think you don't really need a Black Lotus uh, in this deck I mean obviously it can help but I don't think it's a necessity yeah, we're tapping six here. Ooh, Triskelion. That's, of course, a deadly creature against decks like this, especially after I disenchanted that Bad Moon. So this is a really nice two-for-one, and I still have a 1-1 one -one creature that I can use to block, for example, taking a damage here from my own Mana Vault, really needing a Sage of Latinam here. Let's see. Playing another Mishra's Factory. Passing turn. And he shared only has two swamps, but still with, with, with his deck, it could work. He's probably gonna... Well, if he attacks, I can block with the factory, pump the factory to 3-3. Three, three, so this is going to be difficult. He's actually taking the damage. He's going to 20. It's hard to see the dice there in the corner, but he's on 20 at the moment. And playing another um, Swords to Plowsiers, this time on the Vampire Bats. Probably because it's a flyer. I don't have a lot of flyers in this deck, just two Tetravuses in this uh, in this brew. Maybe I should play with three Tetravuses. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm playing a basic island. And maybe I should have untapped my Mana Vault here. Let's see, it looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Tapping a blue and playing another mana vault. And there's the bad moon. That means it's now a 3-4 creature. But if he attacks, I can still pump the factory by itself and then untap. So I'm trying something out here. Maybe people that are looking at this know if this is a thing you can do or not. I'm using my other Mana Vault to untap my tap Mana Vault. And we had a little discussion saying, okay, I'm not sure if that's legal, if you can actually do that. Um, and I said, you know what, I'll just pay for then. I'm still, I don't know what the rule is. So if you know the rule, if you can you use one Mana Vault to untap the other? Obviously, you have to put in extra land because you have to pay four for that, but that's the question. Or is it already on the stack and will you still get the damage? So, playing a planes now. And of course, the question here is, is it at the beginning of the upkeep or during the upkeep? Or it's one of those upkeep discussions. And look at this, an unholy strength on the uh, Urk Raiders, which actually makes the Urk Raiders because it already was 3-4 because of the Bad Moon, then it gets plus 2, plus 1, so that turns it into a 5-5 five, five Urk Raiders. My goodness. And we also see Stone Throwing Devils there. The 1-1 one, one from Arabian Nights. First Striker. Beautiful art. Tapping 2 here. Ooh, City in a Bottle. Ay, 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 ay. Bad news here. I'm also losing my Library of Alexandria, by the way. 
So it is an interesting choice, but that Urk Raiders was really big and I could have a nice two for one. I probably have a lot of cards in hand with two untapped mana vaults. So here you go. I'm just playing out my big creatures now. Attacking for two with that factory that's still open and a 4-4 flying Tetravis on the board. And there is a strip mine on my factory. Still have one factory left. Untapping one of my mana vaults. Deciding to keep my Tetravis a 4-4 flyer because I'm playing against black, so I'm not afraid for any artifact removal. If I would have played against any other color, I probably would have changed my Tetravis into 4-1-1 flyers, simply making it really hard for my opponent to get rid of it. And look at that, tapping six more. There is a Triskelion here, 4-4 Triskelion. And it looks like the game is pretty much played at this point. I am on 12 though. There is a factory. I'm just going to attack with both swinging in here. Able to deal 8 more damage. And look at that. I'm even swinging with my factory. And that's it. That's game. I mean, it can go really, really fast uh, once I played out that... Um, uh, that's sitting in a bottle and when I decided to just fully go for it I had my hand kind of full up with power cards and I was waiting for the right moment to kind of go all in against uh, Richard so there's a first uh, win game one goes to the artificers deck let's go to game number two game number two and it might be interesting to note here that we did not sideboard uh, Richard did not have a sideboard for this particular deck so we said you know what let's just continue Carry on. I don't have any specific black hate cards in the deck anyway. I have been thinking a little bit about adding uh, Psychic. Is it called Psychic Allergy? No, it's a card from the dark. It's got Allergy and names and Enchantment. Uh, it's pretty brutal against mono decks, mono colored decks. So, I mean, look it up. Look it up if you're interested. Allergy, Enchantment to Dark. Very interesting. Been thinking about running that in my sideboard against those mono colored decks builds especially those aggro builds okay we see Richard here taking a mulligan so let's see so he's going down to six cards it's not looking good for Richard though because when of course when you have a weenie deck you want to have all your cards in hand especially when playing with black because you don't have that uh, that many possibilities to draw extra cards agreed perhaps there's a mana vault turn one there is a bat moon attacking here again at eh? that bat moon vampire bats combination and now we've got message of latinam mana vault idea going and tapping two here ay 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 losing a mana again and attacking here for two damage so i'm finding a land not a planes though paying five Ooh, interesting brain geyser. So this is a really good start for me. Probably gonna pass turn and then sack my mana vault end of turn. But another attack, three more damage already on 14. So, I mean, I'm drawing a lot of cards, but I need to get some blockers, you know, get rid of that pesky vampire bats. Instead, I'm just playing a Mishra's factory here and that doesn't fly. What else can I do? Tapping three here, playing a copy artifact over my own Mistress Factory. So I was actually animating it, making it a 2-2 two -two and then copying it. Ooh, unholy strength. This is getting interesting. Now he's attacking. Now I have to make a difficult decision here. I'm actually taking all the damage, unwilling to sack my Sage. And only time will tell if this is a smart decision. All of a sudden I'm on eight life and it feels like this game is going really quickly this is just turn number four for me here and despite the fact that i had a pretty good start i'm feeling the pressure and i need to get rid of that flyer i need one of my swords to plowsiers here i could find them in game number one i had two in total but it's difficult now and if this continues i will have to start sacking artifacts to find solutions and obviously i don't want to do that And he's attacking, not attacking with his factory. But I mean, this flyer, without even pumping it, I'm getting tons of damage. Playing a disenchant over the unholy strength, just because it's gonna 
save me some damage but remember i'm also got a damage from my own city of brass i'm on four life look at this wow and that's it that's game is it am i giving up i mean i am shaking richard's hand here that would make it one one but there are a few outs aren't there a few outs uh, let's see okay i'm taking on my turn i'm sacking this to draw a card And I'm doing that just because I'm hoping to find one of those outs to find an answer. Playing a factory, I I think I need a swords. I need a swords to take care of the hippie, but even then, I don't think I can win this. I need a Triskelion, that could help, but I don't have enough mana to cast a Triskelion. Wow, and then when you think back about how I started this game with that Mana Vault and that Brain Geyser and all the, all the cards I drew, and then still, I just couldn't find the solution. Going to three here, so I have found a Swords to Plows here, but it's just not enough. So, pointing out my Taunus' Coffin, which is just too expensive to play out, I had another Disenchant. Probably drew that too late, though, to really make a difference. And uh, this is really nice to see here. So it's 1-1. Uh, it's one, one. We see Black Weenie here taking the win against the Artificer's deck. And let's continue to game number three. Game number three is about to begin. So it's a 1-1. One, one. I get to start at least. And uh, I mean, I just looking back at that game too, I'm like, how could I lose that game with, with such a good opening with that Mana Vault and that Sage? Brain guys are drawing all those cards. But sometimes it happens in Magic where it's just like, I, I was playing a good game and you still lose. Uh, am I, you know, anyway, we're in game three now, which is exciting. Uh, let's see who can win this matchup. There's the Stone Frog Devils by Richard. I am playing out a factory, another Mishra's factory, being able to deal three damage here. So I'm putting the pressure on the Richard this time. He's on 17. And there's a Black Knight attacking here. Going to 19. Another Mishra's factory. Okay. I wonder what, what's in my hand, if I'm really happy with, with all this. I mean, it looks very strong, but on the other hand, I need blue mana and just color, colored mana to really do anything. And dealing two more damage, he's going to 15 now. There's a strip mine. Oh, and there's a sinkhole. I think this can be quite decisive. Losing two lands and getting a ton of damage here. This is not great for me. Attacking, playing a mana vault. Let's see what can happen here. A bad moon. Oh, that's bad news. That's more damage for me. Going to 11. And it looks like I'm just drawing mana sources. And what I need right now is a creature, a big creature, a Suchi, preferably a Triskelion, so I can do some, some business. A Disenchant would be nice as well. Look at that. Urk Raiders filling the board. Coming my way, I need something to deal with these Urk Raiders. I need a creature. Tapping four. Could this be a Suchi? And there is a Suchi. So at least I have one blocker, but it's not great. I also have that Mishra's Factory, but I just played it out. Attacking with everything here. Remember, I'm already on eight. Okay, he's not attacking with the Devils. Animating my... not. I guess I have to animate my Factory here. Animating my Factory... And that means I'm still taking three damage, going to five life here, and I'm losing my factory because it cannot pump itself because of summoning sickness. And as you've noticed, I've kind of slowed down the game here. This is on normal speed because there were just so many things happening. And look at that, there is a <laughs> mind twist. Doesn't really matter, I had two islands in hand. I think I just drew all my mana sources this game. And what I really need is something to deal with these creatures. There's just so much pressure on the board here. Let's see what I can do. Okay, playing another Suchi. So maybe I'm just going to survive this. Looks like I've stabilized a little bit. I mean, I can block the two Urk Raiders. And let the Devils go through and I'll still be on three. Wonder if he plays... Oh, this could be a problem. A Flyer... Again, I mean, if you look at these games and you see the work that the Vampire Bats have done, and look at that, Richard's actually taking four damage. He doesn't want to attack here. It's hard to see his life total because the dice are there in the corner just under it. So maybe I'll just put a life counter 
on during the editing of this matchup. Attacking here, blocking both of them. And that's it, of course, because of the bad moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alpha Timmy's, thank you, thank you. Oh, because of the bad moon. Oh, my God. I, oh, man. So you... Uh, the Devils were 2-2. Two -two. The, the Flyer, the... Um, um, the, the help me out of vampire bats was also of course one two so already three damage you could pump it for two so that that means i'm dead oh man 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 so we're kind of talking it over let's look back at that uh, final final battle uh in the replay Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so nice to uh, look back at this game uh, I just wanted to thank you for watching this uh, let me know what you think about the brews uh, if you want to support the channel you probably know this already but you can subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet really helps out a lot you can leave a like leave a comment click the notification bell so you will get notified and as you probably also know already I have a patreon page so if you can miss anything, you can check out my Patreon page and you can support me financially as well. Talking about the patrons, let's take a look at all my patrons. Let's go to the end credits. Ich kann das Finger zu Sumba gesehen.